And when did you come to this country? In June of uh, 1997. Okay. And was it, um, was this the first place that you came to when you, you came to England? No. I went to Arsden first and after Chelsea and after here. Okay. And what was it that brought you here? Uh, looking for a better life for my kids because I have three already and my country at the moment don't give jobs, don't give nothing. Uh, my husband come first and I come after him with the kids. So. Okay, um, so could you tell me your memories of moving into Trellick Towers? Um, at the first time I'm a little bit scary because it's a big building and we hear so many stories about that. This is it's like uh, not good to raise kids in the area and things like that. But when I come here, I saw uh, some so big house. I fell in love with the house, <laughs> and I said, I said to my husband, "Look, it's not the area makes the people; it's the people makes the area, and we need to to try our best to raise our kids." This is what we've done. <laughs> you say you fell in love with it. Mm. What was it about it that you fell in love with? Because in other house I saw it, they are so so small. And I, when I went to my kitchen and they are so big, <laughs> like in my country, they, they, we have a big kitchens and things like that. And I fell in love. And, <laughs> and I, I felt like I'm in home as well. Because there's so much people around speaking Portuguese, speaking Spanish, and I feel like I'm not alone here. So it was the flat rather than the whole building that you fell in love with? At the, f at the, the beginning is the flat, because we're looking for a flat. In, but after, we met some people, and some neighbors, and we feel like stay here forever, I think. <laughs> Do you remember the actual day that you moved in? Yeah, 1st of September, 98. And could you tell us about the experience of moving in itself? Ah, uh, it's a good experience because at the first we've been moving the hostel and hostel until the council give us a proper house. Um, I feel like happy at the time because I don't have a house, I don't have nothing and they gave me opportunity to have my, own, my flat to raise my kids. This is the most important thing we think about at the moment when we come here. And what about furnishings? Uh, we don't have nothing at <laughs> when we move in. We start buying little things in the market, um, we sleep on the floor, we, try to painting and everything, because when we come here, there's graphics on the walls and things like that. We, 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 try, we, we try to hard, very hard to make a house here. You said you've been scared. Mm. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Because when you have kids, you, you scare, scare, you've been scared of the area you're going to. And because we're here, it's so many drug dealers around and and so many robberies and things like that. You feel scared for, for yourself and for your family. And it is the most uh, fair off. <laughs> Did you stay feeling scared? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Not by myself, but because of my kids. They are, when they aren't in teenagers, I have uh, some bad experience in the, in the area and um, I feel scary for my little one now. Um, but I hope the thing's going better. Could you tell us about the bad experiences? Yeah, because um, when my kids, I have a old, old one, 25 years old already, because we come from Portugal, we have an experience, it's been bullying in the school, he's been bullying on the streets because I teach him not to fight with another people not, and because he's so shy 
the picking on him, on him. Um, they even in the lifts one time they they kick him inside the lifts they you need to r rush with him to the hospital at that time and this be a bad bad experience that time after that I have another one he's 21 already he went in rocks with the bad people he went to jail to Felton um, I tried to go to, to straight but it's impossible he went with the wrong people old, older than him and now he's regrets because he don't have a job every time he's going to a job they want a criminal record and they have a criminal record he have a little girl to take care and they don't have a job but now I'm, af I'm afraid for the little one so how do you feel about living here? I'm safe on my home, but I don't feel the kids is safe on the streets. And because, you know, in my country, sometimes when they're doing bad things, you can slap them and teach them. And here you can, can even give a, a little slap or you get in trouble. This, I think this is the big, big problem. Even when the, with my uh, my son in the school, I think the school is not. I don't know. I don't. The school is not be prepared for these kind of things. Because uh, if they're not doing in school a good behavior, what they doing? They send them home for one week. This is what they want to be in home, not doing nothing. And. And if, uh, when this has happened to my son, I need to give up a, one job because I need to be home with him because he's, he's not allowed to be by his own because he is underage. And I have so many troubles at that time, so many troubles. And I don't know, I think the, the school needs to be more thinking about the parents and the, the and I don't know, instead of they send them home for one week or two weeks or exclude them from the school, they need to think another ways to punish them inside the school. Mm, like to more work for, for them, be alone or something like that, but in school, because it's very important. They learn and they, they learn how, how to um, you know, to give respect for another one, because I think the kids today, they don't have respect for no one. For, they don't have respect for mom, mothers, they don't have respect for fathers, they have respect for anyone these days. I'm going to hand over to, to Mickey. A little request, I mean, that is it's fascinating. If you could not look at these two, just pretend they don't exist. Okay then. <laughs> um, okay, anything else on that? When when did you move in? Do you remember the what the year? I think you here? Before, yeah. yeah, one uh, first of September ninety eight. Okay. And what was 90, the yeah, ninety eight, yeah. Ninety eight. And what was the area like before? I rough. Know, it was rough. Yeah, it's rough. Okay. And what, what kind of things did you see on the street or? Uh robberies at daytime. Around at daytime. daytime. Around four o'clock, five o'clock. Special on the back, on the on the garden, yeah. on the on the back side, and drugs everywhere. And how long did this go on for? Quite a few few years. Quite a few years until they put some cameras around and and the rights around houses and things like that. Did you ever speak to the council and say, maybe this flat isn't for me, um, I need to move on for the... For yeah, the I try. Mm. But they tell me there's no flats around and we need to take this one or we don't have any anything else. So, mm. so it went on for, um, you said, a couple of years and then it calmed down. Mm -hmm. um, and things were better for, you, for your children, you felt more mm. safe, would you say? Or? Yeah, it's better now. It's not so rough. 
but still have some issues on the street. And did it help to have um, the community around? Because I, before you said that, you know, it was nice that there was Portuguese speakers, you know, it felt like there was a community, like it was almost back home. Did that help to kind of it's keep it, you? Yeah, it's, it's still, I still have a, a lot of Portuguese people, community and Spanish around. But you know, everyone mind his business and they don't care about another ones. This is the truth. Mm. Mm. And do you, do you have um, quite close friends that you? One or two only. Yeah, close friends. But well, it's nice to have one or two, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but family is not here. Everyone is in Portugal. My mom is living in France. I by myself here. <laughs> With your beautiful children. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, yeah. Okay. Um, so when these friends that you had, how did you meet them? Because this is such a huge building. How did you? Around the school, when they went to primary school, we, we have uh, uh, two Portuguese girls. They have uh, kids as well, the same age of me. Mm. We're still friends of till today. Mm. Mm. Do you ask about neighbours? Yeah, your neighbours. Um, you said that, oh. you know, everyone kind of is concerned with themselves and keeps themselves to themselves. Yeah. Um, but I guess, first of all, in general, what are your neighbours like? Do you... Nice you people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are nice people. Everyone is quiet. They say good morning, good afternoon, bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what kind of range of people? Are there quite a lot of families? Or? Uh, families, yeah. Most of them, they are families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and are they similar age to you, to your children? Or? Mm, yeah. Some of younger, some is the same age, yeah. Okay. My older ones. And what's the makeup? Um, in, as in, um, are there a lot of Portuguese families on this, this floor? No. It's English. Mm -hmm. I think it's not English, they are Irish, and some Arabic as well, but Portuguese on this floor is only me. Okay. So quite a nice mix though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. It's, it's kind of like London, isn't it? Yeah. There's such a mix of people, mm -hmm. um, and they can live together. And yeah. Problems. Have you ever had any problems with your neighbours, like mm -hmm. noise, play music? Only the downstairs ones. Downstairs. Yeah, the downstairs one, she, since she's moving in, I think she's by the flat. She's the owner of the flat. She's been complaining about everything. Even if my my little one, she's walking on, the, she's coming and knock on the door. Last time she come and knock on the door and offer money to buy a carpet. Oh, really? <laughs> I said, I'm not sorry, but I can do nothing. She's a little one, she's running around. I can do nothing. Did you say that she owns the flat mm. downstairs? Okay. Yeah, she is. So on this floor, is that is there a mixture of social housing and private? Yeah. Home, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the and maybe you might not know, but those who actually own the, um, their properties, what are they? F families or working couple? Do you know? Uh, the downstairs one I know is a family. It's her and her her son as well, but I think her son is moving away because he's living far away here from, she's by herself now. And I have on 106, a uh, young couple is by as well, the front, mm -hmm. they're on the front as well. Okay, um, great, anything? Yeah, you said about, um, about the person downstairs. It might sound a silly question, but when she comes up and bangs on your door, about the noise. How do you feel about that? Bad. Because <laughs> we can do nothing about that, you know. You can do nothing about it. And she's complaining to the TMO all the time. And the TMO write me letters, but I can do nothing about that. You know. It's daytime, she's playing around. I can do nothing. And I'm not, and I don't think she's allowed to come on my door knocking at 11 o'clock in the morning because my, sh my children is is walking or running around or making noise, um, offer him to buy a carpet. <laughs> I put in my, my floor wherever I want. <laughs> you said bad, it makes you feel bad. Did, 
Does that bad mean you feel guilty about it or bad because you're just fed up with it? No, I don't feel guilty because this has happened. If my neighbor have a child, I need to respect it. She's a little one, she don't understand, it. And I feel bad because I don't, I don't want to have troubles with the neighbors, that's all. I'm a quiet person, I'm respecting everyone, and I feel guilty, I don't feel guilty. Because I can do nothing about that. <laughs>